If you've ever managed a network in a smaller environment, you'll know that those are relatively easy to manage. You might even have smaller work group switches, and you can take physical areas of the network and separate them out onto physical switches. You don't have to worry about VLAN configurations within that switch. In larger environments, of course, you've got these very large switches. And you might have inside of these switches many, many, many different VLANs so that you can logically separate parts of the network from other parts. Now, the issue of course, is that if you have a configuration issue relating to a VLAN, it might be a little bit more difficult to troubleshoot. You're going to have to go through the entire configuration of the switch or in configuration on a per port basis to determine if you have the correct VLANs in the correct place. You'll often see problems with this based on connectivity. You've plugged in a brand new server. You've assigned the server a static IP address. You plug it into the switch. It's got a link light, but it can't ping anything can't connect out to any other device that's on the network. That certainly points to there being some type of IP-related issue, and that certainly is something you might want to look at with your VLAN configuration. When you've misconfigured a VLAN and you plug in that connection, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. There's really no middle ground. There's no performance issues that you're going to deal with because there's no performance at all. It's either going to operate normally or it's not going to operate at all. That's because these VLANs separate it out everything by their IP address. And if we've statically assigned an IP address on a server and we're now trying to communicate out, if we're on the wrong subnet, we're not going to get any type of connectivity to any other device on the network. Hopefully, as you are building out your switch, as you are building out your network, you spent some time and you created some documentation of how your network is designed, and at least a logical diagram of where your different VLANs are, what devices are connected to those VLANs, and what IP address schemes might be associated with each separate VLAN. So look at your switch configuration, see how it compares to your documentation, and make sure that there's no mismatch there. Maybe somebody changed some settings on the switch but did not update the documentation. So you may want to double check and make sure if you're having a connectivity problem that you really are dealing with the right situation and configuration on your switch itself. You also want to verify your IP address. If you're statically assigning IP addresses to devices, you may want to go back and check the device and make sure you typed everything in exactly the way you would expect. If you have any mistakes in the IP address, you accidentally put it on a different network subnet, maybe your subnet mask is incorrect, maybe your default gateway was not typed in properly, then you're going to have problems with connectivity even if you have the right VLAN configured inside of your switch. So as someone's checking your VLAN configuration for that port on the switch, confirm that that VLAN IP address scheme is correct on your workstation, and that workstation IP address you have is a member of that particular IP subnet. You also want to look at the switch and confirm that your trunk configuration is configured properly. If you have multiple switches, then you're certainly going to have uplinks from switch to switch. These inter-switch links are often trunks that carry multiple VLANs inside of them. And to be able to communicate from one VLAN across to another switch, your VLAN has to be a member. It has to be in that trunk group so that you can send the data from one switch to the other. So also make sure that the switch configuration on both sides for the trunk is also set up properly. It does you no good to send that trunk through that connection if on the other side that switch is not expecting that particular VLAN to be in that trunk group. If you move the device to another VLAN, you're going to have to make that change on the switch, but also make sure you remember to make the change to the client itself, because it's now going to have a different IP address that's going to be in a different IP subnet. If you follow all of these troubleshooting tasks with VLANs, you can be assured that when you're plugging in your devices for the very first time or you're moving them from VLAN to VLAN, that you're going to have exactly the connectivity that you expect.